Well, this is, this, this is the challenge. Although I, I dare say Nigeria does have this challenge of, um, and this is really coming from uh, the rest of us, no, not, maybe not those who are in charge. It is felt that a lot more is known about goings on in our country, in our communities, than is actually allowed, uh, that is actually uh, spoken of. Uh, and this sort of binds everybody, both those who should be in charge and um, those who indeed are yearning uh, to be governed over. Uh, when, you, when you try to read up on this subject, you find that um, uh, the, the elders in that area, um, uh, they, 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 they are not short of expression. They think, they think from what I've been able to read, that one of the main challenges in the Southeast and its security issues is the refusal of maybe inability is perhaps a better word, of the governors there um, to work as a team. Everybody, according so the narration goes, uh, so the narrative goes, everybody wanting to, you know, become a victor on his own. Whereas it, has, it is being emphasized by those elders who are commenting, some of them who are now retired, saying that we, 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 need, we need to come together to solve this matter together. The, there is the thought... Um, there was recently a summit. Um, there's the thought that present leaders don't consult enough. Present leaders in the Southeast don't consult amongst themselves enough. And the idea, you can see the idea behind that thought is that um, if you won't tap the experience of those who have come, served, and gone, uh, but are still around, uh, how are you going to achieve anything? Because it is felt that be, you can come into office at a very young age. You don't know much about administration. Uh, yes, you could have been voted in. Um, that is on the one hand. The other hand, uh, uh, Bianca Ujuku, uh, Ambassador Bianca Ujuku, she was saying the other day that um, if you don't release Namdi Kano, there will never be an end. I mean, as disparate as that. Um, is it Uncle Yori? Um, there are a lot of dynamics in the Southeast Security Challenge. Okay. Uh, but like we started, there is nothing extraordinarily um, unique. Unique to that. Vis a vis what is happening in the North, except for these differences that some of these differences that uh, we have identified. Um, that governors don't work together or in unison in the Southeast is not peculiar to them. It's a national problem. Even in the not that we talk about today, it's not as if the governors are working together as it were. You know? And don't forget that we are in a society where it is only government agencies that bear arms. And after that, the next people that bear arms are the criminals. The terrorists, the criminals, these are the two people that don't need licenses mm -hmm. to bear arms in this country. The government and the terrorists or the criminals, you know. But you and I, we need license yes. to bear arms. Yes. If you don't have license and you have in possession of arms, you will go to jail for it. So that is one paradox so that there's should, an accounting in that yes, sense. that should settle at the back. Now for the for the southeast, um, the political part of it is not helping matters. That's just the truth, you know. Uh, politicians are more interested in their political ambition vis-a-vis uh, -vis the security challenge there. And uh, why I said so is that let us even assume without conceding that um, you have some limitation, especially because even your own paramilitary organizations don't bear arms. But you can be highly instructive to the extent that even the police and the army, and the, you can empower them. You can put them on the run in such a manner that even the criminals will know that in your own state, it may happen in others, but in your own state, you won't allow that. You won't condole that. But it's not happening like that in the southeast. That is one aspect of it. Then another thing is that even the people themselves are not ready to push out the criminals among them. To what extent are they even cooperating with standing army, the police and the like? To what extent are they cooperating with intelligence uh, agencies and the like. That is also another aspect of it, which the people must look inward. 
Now, don't also forget that this, the Southeast, they have this independent kismet, um, um, what do you call it, cultural orientation. Uh, so of, it's yeah. not as if they are, you know, her, uh, what do you call it, they are so coordinated. Right from the word go, it's a, it's a king, um, kingsman thing. So if security is going to bring them together, now it has to be something that is, that is of a common interest to, to them. So that now brings me to the issue of Bianca Ojuku. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that as it is now, whether you like it or not, the government has made a hero out of Namdi Azir and Namdi Kanu. Kanu. Government by, you know, arresting him and detaining him and, you know, bringing out popularity out of nothing. Nobody knew this man from anywhere before. But one of the best ways government unconsciously brings out hero from activists the day you arrest them, you have made them automatic heroes. Because most of the time, if you look at the way it starts, it starts, you know, unassumably, it starts quietly and all those stuff like that. Those people were not bearing arms initially, if you remember. It was just placard, normal activism and all those the stuff like that. The IPOB. The IPOBs and all those stuff like that. You know, I granted, I was part of the entire one of these, and I said that if government did not handle it properly, these people will re re strategize and reappraise their strategy. And that's what happened today. Today now you are no longer talking of an IPOB of a placard and all those stuff like that. You are not talking of an IPOB that has the capacity and capability to able to uh, you know, confront our military formation. Why? Because the government before now had handled this matter, as far as I'm concerned, unprofessional, as far as I'm concerned. And that is what now today, for you to now assist the situation, we're not talking about release of the Nam Dikanu. And to me, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing, there is nothing spectacular about the release of Nam Dikanu. If you release the Nam Dikanu, the Nam Dikanu is not going to divide Nigeria. Inamdi Kanu is not going to separate Nigeria. He does not have the capacity or capability to bring Nigeria into disintegration. No, is it? It doesn't no, no, have no, it. No, is it guaranteed that you know, anything can change yes. in the security so, situation? But, but no, but no, if you release Inamdi Kanu, it has its own. Because whether you like it or not, do you know what it means for IPOB to say people should not open shop on a particular day? And indeed, they go their way. Until today. And for goodness sake, you know, that speaks volume. You and I can't do. You can't do. You can't go to your community and say you are angry with government. Don't open shop. You know. Oh. So that simply means that the government on its own. Look, there are times that we have to swallow our pride to do the needful. There is nothing. Ojuku did worse than he did. Ojuku led Nigeria to war, but Ojuku was given presidential pardon. The same Ojuku still contested. It was Ojuku that established Abga. We are talking about contested to be president of Nigeria. So what has he done to the extent that we are now incarcerating him for this long? And that also is also, you know, an amber that is watering the seed of bitterness in that southeast. So there's nothing spectacular about the release of Namdi Kanu. It's a political matter. It's not a legal issue. There's nothing like treasonable felony and all those things we are talking about. It's a pure political solution that we are going to court and come in every day. He can remain in court for how many years? About me, Awola was in court for 10 years or there about, or was in jail. All those things are political things. And it, the only solution is political solution. And if the government is humble enough to attend to it politically, it will have its own percentage. Okay, I was going to say that. that it, yes. It, 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 it isn't as if you're saying... No, that it's that. going to have its own fundamental percentage okay. Okay. in the reduction of the security challenges in the Southeast. Because at that point in time, even the unknown government and the IPOB... Now the question will not be on what ground, on what rationale are you now talking about this type of violence? Indeed. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, hello, good morning, Mr. George in Ikeja. Thank you, Yuri, and good morning to Tony. Yes. Good morning. Thank you, Yuri. Truth must be told. When this issue of agitation or, you know, was uh, launched by Nnamdi Kano in the East. It wasn't militant initially. Later on, he launched a military wing that was becoming troublesome to the society. We did not see the leaders in the East do anything. 
from my own way of seeing it, they instead encouraged it. The political elites in the, in the East believed it would help them in their political ambitions, that if their son is calling for a separate country, the rest of the country might be forced to allow a president to be elected from the East. Because of that, they kept quiet and the thing grew and grew and grew to the point that they themselves and even ITOP, set up by Nnamdi Kano himself, could no longer control it. You can only start something. You can't control the effect. Yeah. When something like that happened in Yoruba land not long ago, the group came out and said they want separation from Nigeria. What did you see? The leaders in the Southwest, the urban, the political elite, all of them said, no, you cannot do that. We will disown you. Within a few weeks, it melted down. Those boys did not say anything again. They disappeared into the in thin air. But what do you think the East? For Hanel Bengibo, the elders group, the, 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 the people who are supposed to be regarded as the leaders and the elders, they, every day, because of the government, they leave our son. He has not done anything. And I think, uh, I'm sorry to disagree with Tony on this aspect. When he said the government did wrong by not releasing him, this guy committed crime. He launched a radio station, calling Nigeria all sorts of names. He launched a military wing, committing crimes, killing people. Many people have died. Is that not a crime that the government should uh, punish him for? If your son is doing something wrong, you must tell that your son that he has done wrong in love, not covering him, and then he, 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 you, you, he, on, on the other hand, you are using it to try to achieve a political case. That is wrong. And if you don't, I have already said it on this program on Creole, if you don't address the cause of a problem, you will never solve it from the top. The root, the root cause is that where Unamdikalu uh, came from, his people are hypocritical. I'm sorry to use that word, but that's the truth. They are hypocritical about their attitude to the subject matter, and that is what has caused all this. To the extent that Okay, I, I think we, 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 we did lose there. Okay, that, that was Tony, uh, um, no, so that was um, uh, Mr. George uh, going on there uh, about his perspective on, on this whole matter. Um, okay, uh, some, of it, some of it was a bit um, uh, delicate in the sense, you know, one has to be careful about uh, what one utters on, on these matters. Um, but he doesn't think that uh, well you said that there is a percentage that yes, cannot be discounted that yes. can be achieved but yeah. to the main subject matter because this is not about ipob no no you know, no, no, no this is not about ipob no. the, it's it's about insecurity in the area mm -hmm. and um where that is coming from uh, there there are these linkages uh, that you don't quite understand for instance um Ebubeago, for example uh their own version of uh I'm a <laughs> if you want to put it that way, well, well, that's every, it. it's never every, that everybody has to it. come up with their own sort of, yeah. you know, we, we, uh, just because you pointed out that they were able to say, "Don't come out." You hear you you uh, oh ye hear this oh ye hear this. Don't come out on certain days, and you know people complied. People, even though the governors were trying to persuade them. Uh, the people complied. Now, and meanwhile, there are also kidnappers. Kidnappers, robbers, you know, they sometimes, you know, are exported out of the area. So it, it becomes difficult because um, there, there, there seem to be quite a number of forces in there. The straightforward criminal forces. Straightforward <laughs> kidnappers. Let, let, let me help you. Okay. Let, let, when? Well, let uh, the Reverend Dominic come in and then you okay. come in. Good morning, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Chief Jory. Good yes, morning, sir. Johnny. We're looking yes, at the sir. security situation <laughs> in the southeast. Yes. Jory, it is 
quite interesting when you bring guests here. But to be frank, Tony, God bless you. Tony has spoken truth to power. But if you let me answer George and answer to Nigerians. George is not fair to us. As a man called Joe Ibokwe, his house has been burned down in the east. Most of us do not go to the east because we do not support IPOB. Not because we don't support, we are different. No, we don't support the injustice they made to us. But this young man called uh, in, in prison now, Una uh, Carlo, many he rose up. Most of us, I won't tell you what I told him on, on television. We called him how to go this way. You can't fight an elephant while you're not, while you're not ants. That's a, another thing I don't want to say it here. Most of us, Yori, do not go to South East again. Because if you go to South East today, I say, young men, take it easy. You become a saboteur. You are married to destroy or killed. As Joe Ibokwe. So, George is not fair. All the elders of Igbo land did not support this movement, the way they're going about it. We supported that there's injustice made against us, but you don't use injustice to fight injustice. That's our position. Number two, Tony has been right. When this thing started, they declared IPOB militant group. They have not killed one fly. Tony is my witness. I have talked to them. They have not killed one fly. We said the last administration, not this administration, but other administration, we explained the whole issue. How do you touch a people who, in UN, you have right to say, I don't want to belong to this nation or that nation? You don't touch the militants. By that, they have not killed one bird. They have not killed one fly. It's when they caught the militants and they arrest this man, take him to court. One of our senators, I believe, stood for him. And when he came back, Nigeria government went to his house to fight him, even on the day of the court. This guy did not have come. It is that war. Yori, I went there two years ago. If you see go to not the Carlo house today, it's like a civil war place. Over 20 cars were burned down. I'm not supporting him. But what I'm trying to say, there's no evil man that watched this car. I'm above 50 and have been part of evil people that supported him and the Carlo and the way he's going. Do you know he calls us as pastors? He said we are stupid pastors. He doesn't respect the traditional rulers. He doesn't respect the po political leaders. They won't like what I'm saying now. But judge is not like get we, who are intellectuals from South East, that we supported them and the Carlo. That is not true. What happened is that the last government mismanaged it. You know, do you know that? This young man called Nandi Carlo has started this shenanigan in the days of uh, Good Lord Jonathan. And Good Lord Jonathan ignored him. He went to the dustbin of no history. It was the Buhari government that made hero out of nobody. And today, here we, here we are. Let me say this. The situation in South East today, even though you believe this man, we don't go to Domal. Because Amropas have become IPOB. Kidnappers have become IPOB. What is unknown government? I've told you this session. There's nothing like a known government. I poor people, our brothers, they are sisters, they are cousins, they are in-laws. We know them. But what you call a known men, we are criminals who took advantage of a bad situation. So please, judge not in such evil people. We do not support that nonsense. All if right. you want to pull away from Nigeria, we are intellectual enough to know what to do. And we're not going out of Nigeria. We have built this nation from Sokoto to Abuja to Lagos. Ibos, we have built it. We are not going anywhere. So let please, please, sir, let me say this. I beg Tinibu, who is a good activist like me, to release this man to go back to UK and let's find our peace here. Because that man is irrelevant to come to Ibo land. He has no voice in Ibo land. It's not a, a, a possible. All right, then. Well, I think he, 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 he just said some of the things I wanted to say with mm -hmm. respect to your mm -hmm. question that as we speak today, criminals have taken advantage. Yes of what is happening in the southwest uh, southeast uh, yes southeast what ordinary it, it, it's, political it, agitation it's it's just like when you hear kidnapping in the north for example you first of all go to uh, everybody thinks it's the full anime that kidnaps but it's not a very big business it has nothing to do with the Fulani or any, it's just exclusively criminals. It's and maybe when you talk about the, enterprise. yes, when you talk about the terrorists that want to use it to raise their terrorism, financing, whatever. And that's what is happening in the Southeast as we speak, as we speak. Unfortunately, being aided and abetted by their own brothers and some of the criminal elements that are in some of these forces, aiding them and abetting them. 
And that is why you are talking about some of these security challenges in this uh, southeast. Now, Unamdi can with uh, once you see, there is no way you talk about southeast security challenge that, that you will not talk about IPOB. Yes. You know, because but like he like, rightly said, IPOB is now a combination of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's a combination of all forms of criminals. Maybe some of them can be, you know, can have that philosophy and the like. But you see, it's so painful to the extent that prophetically, if Namdi Kanu is released today, mm -hmm. it may interest you that I may contest as president of Nigeria. <laughs> it may interest you that if he say, okay, I want to be governor of his state, Indeed. he will win landslide. Well, because there is the no a certain notoriety now. That's, he will, if he decides to say, okay, I want to start from my state, he will have a landslide victory. Okay. Uh, Luke in Portacot. Good morning to you, sir. My brother, see, uh, uh, I want to differentiate. Let us, let us understand this thing this way. Um, there's different items of different criminals. And I still have constantly said to Nigeria that we are not in support of foreigners. They are not in support of a thing. It's not like you build there. Are some things called uninvited case. They come. That does not mean that they are important. They are they are invited. That they are part of that house, my brother. The issue of Nandi Khan has become a thing. I don't know. You know when, when you teach me what I've already known, Nigerian government is already. It pains me when I saw Supreme Court returning this man back to a, a war court. That was thing would have been buried. When people come out and say, look, release now, I would be saying so is because we want to differentiate between the invited guests and non-invited guests, my brother. As it stands today, I am an acquired woman. If anything happened by the military from the southeast, I'm not seeing it as a professionalist. I'm not seeing it as a, a justified issue. Because, see, my brother, let us be very frank with us. Until you differentiate these two things, we are not going to have it right. Let this man go so that we can, everybody can criticize what is to be criticized. Everybody can condemn what is to be condemned. Everybody can come out and say, okay, fine. Now that this is called by his name, what about this? And then we will also say, we will also come out and say, look, government, use force. But as it stands now, I am telling the Nigerian government that whatever force they use on the surface is injustice. To me, that's personal. It's right. that personal. Until now, the Kalu is. In fact, I even it, it, it even come to a stage where I say, if you want to jail him, jail him. So that we understand that, look, he has paid, he has committed a crime, and he is paying for what he did. But at the time now, you put, you know, it's just like you putting one leg inside a car and then putting one uh, outside the, 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 the other one outside the car. It's, it's not normal, my brother. Mm. It's not normal. This man has been, okay, even up to the Supreme Court, they, the only thing they said here was, oh, sorry, oh, it was a mistake. We know that you, you were, you were, you were, uh, I don't know, from Kenya and, and all those things. They only, you see, that what is your job? Your job is not to, 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 to sympathize. Your job is to do justice. All right, so then. Brother, well, thank you. We thank you. Saying, Thank you for calling in, Luke. Really appreciate your call. Uh, do please stay with us. Uh, 